I'm going to hop right into it because this has got to be one of the most exciting examples that I've been waiting to build for so long. This is how to build an AI agent that is connected to live Shopify data. This is going to be a big tutorial because we're actually going to go through two different custom functions. We're going to be able to get current inventory data and we're going to be able to have it track orders and get the current status of an order based on an email address. So these are two real examples that you can use when building and selling AI agents to businesses, especially e-commerce businesses that have a Shopify store and be able to have a custom AI chatbot on their website that can be able to interact with users to get them the information that they want as quickly as possible. And so for example, it would look something like this. Here it actually is in the dashboard itself and we can actually do this live. So I'll refresh the page. I'll say I want to track order, put in an email address and it gives us the information of the tracking number and it gives us a link to open the tracking to find all of the information. And then in the same conversation, we could also ask it for product inventory. So we could ask it about a product like the AI dragon shirt and it's gonna give us the current inventory availability, which if we were to go to the Shopify store, we can see that the AI dragon t-shirt has 12 in stock. So this AI agent has the ability to get information from the Shopify store and then give it back to the user inside a conversation. So this helps avoid the user having to submit a support ticket or search through their email, whatever it may be. It gets them to what they're looking for as quickly as possible. So in order to build this, we're going to create a custom Shopify app that has access to your Shopify stores API, which includes different things like inventory, order status, customer data, whatever it may be. Essentially all of that information is gonna go through the Shopify API to the custom app that has been created and installed on the Shopify store itself that will be able to give and receive data based off of the inputs, at which point once the code has been executed, the answers and responses are gonna be sent back to the AI agent, which the AI agent can then take and send and formulate into its response back into the user conversation, just like so. So before we get started, all of the information that is gonna be in this tutorial will be available via the link down below. You can get the instructions instructions, you can get the code that you can copy and paste. You can use the prompts as well as the full instructions and everything that you could possibly need to follow along and copy this tutorial for yourself. And again, that's in the link down below. Also, before we get started, there is a whole nother tutorial that I created that is a little bit simpler than this, which it allows an AI agent to be connected to active stock market data. So a user could ask, hey, what's the current price of a stock like Meta? And then the AI agent will be able to go to the stock market market data, pull down the current price of that stock for Meta and return the price. There's a full guide in here and it's going to be very similar to this one, but it, like I said, it is, it is a bit simpler. So definitely go take a look at that one if this one seems to be a little bit too complicated. But with that being said, the way that we're going to get started is using ChatGPT or we can use the template code down below. And that's probably actually what we're going to use. And that will allow us to simply just copy and paste it. But if you're using ChatGPT, you can use this prompt, which essentially says, hey, I want to create a custom function that will get the product availability and write the code and give me the JSON parameters, everything that you need. So to save a little bit of time, we're just gonna use the template stuff. But that's why that other example is so good is because it does go through that entire process step-by-step. Step. We're actually gonna start with Shopify and go through the entire process of creating a custom app, installing it, giving it certain permissions via the API, like being able to read the inventory or order data. And then we'll be able to install the app to get the access code. The access code is what we're going to be pasting into the Python code itself inside of Replit. Shopify has a really good tutorial on this and that will also be linked in the Notion template about how you can create a custom app for your Shopify store and the steps that you need to take like creating and installing it, selecting the API scope like I just mentioned and then getting the credentials so that way you can paste those in. And if you're not familiar with any of this, ChatGPT can walk you through this step by step but in order to just keep this very simple and easy, we're going to kind of just speed race through this. So if we go to our our Shopify store and then we click on apps and then we click on app and sales channel settings. And then there's gonna be an option at the top called develop apps. And then you'll have to enable this. And this is what the tutorial will say. Yours should say develop apps, click allow custom app development, and then click allow. Once you have done that, then it should look like mine where you can create an app. Once you create an app, it will look something like this where you can click on the configuration tab and then click on edit. And then there will be a bunch of different options 
ones that you can select. And again, the cool thing is if you're not sure about what to select or what you want in order to get the right results, you can tell ChatGPT, hey, what API scope in Shopify do I need if I want to, for example, know everything about returns? Then you would know that it would say, oh, you need to select read returns. That would give the AI agent the ability to read all of the data about all of the returns. So for the example that we're going to be doing today, where it includes customer data, tracking data, and product inventory data, there's going to be several things that we want to include as an API access scope. So for this, we're going to include read access only for all of these. And that ensures that we're not telling the AI agent by some happenstance, hey, I want you to update or change or edit things. We're just going to be able to pull data from Shopify into the AI agent via this API. So assign fulfillment orders, customer data, fulfillment services, which helps track the orders, inventory data, order data, product data, and shipping data. So now that this custom app has these APIs as its scope, when the AI agent tells the code to be run, that code will be able to have access to pull data down from any of these different categories. Once you've selected all of the different API scopes that you want to be included, then we're going to click over to API credentials, and this will say create. Once you've created this token, you're going to want to copy it, and we're going to be able to paste that into the replica code here in a second. And that's going to be pasted in as a private secret key. If we go back to review our instructions. We've now installed the app with the right API token and we can copy our access code. Now we can start to put things together. In Replit, you're going to create a new Replit and we're going to select Python and you can title this anything. I'm going to title mine, get product availability, and then click create Replit. Once I've created the Replit, I can go into the Notion template and copy the code. And then once the code is pasted in, it should look something like this. And there's going to be two different things that we need to update based off of those steps that we just took in Shopify. The first is going to be updating the Shopify store name. And this is going to be whatever the, your actual domain is. So for example, admin.shopify.com slash store slash stammer dash AI, that's the store name. So whatever your store name is, that's what you're going to be putting into the code here. So for example, I'm going to change my Shopify store name to stammer dash AI. So it matches that, that name in the URL. And then the second thing is, is we're going to add the token that we got from the custom Shopify app and paste it into secret. So if you don't already see secrets, we're going to click the little plus tab here and we can search for secrets. And then this is going to open up a new tab that allows us to add a new secret. And we're going to title this access token. And I've already added this. So that's why it's already showing there. And then we're going to paste in the access token that you got from the custom Shopify app. And we're going to paste that in right here. Once you have that pasted in, we will be able to make sure that the access token is correctly installed inside your code and everything should be working properly at that point. Now to quickly go over the code itself, we can review a few of the different functions that help process the data that Shopify is giving this code to make it easier for the user to have a conversation with the agent and get a resolution to their query as quickly as possible. So the first function here is trying to find the closest matching product ID. And it's gonna be doing that by pulling whatever name that I'm entering in as a product name, which means it's gonna to try to find the closest product to what it is that you typed in. So you don't have to type in the exact product name exactly correctly. It could be slightly wrong and it would still work. And that's because as users, we would just type in like shirt and not t-shirt, like t-s-h-i-r-t. So this function solves for that. Once it finds the right product ID based off of the product name that was given, it's then going to find the current availability of that product. And then it's going to return that information to the URL that we have deployed to like so. Then there's a little break here and you can see that there's some comments here that says now this is the start of the order tracking code. And it's essentially the same thing, but for the different function of passing the user's email to get the current order tracking data and all of that information information will be sent to this appended URL. And if you're like, what is this URL? Well, just give me a sec. So after you have all of this code and you've changed these two details up here, we can click run in order to make sure that there's no bugs or anything wrong with the code. And if there is, it would show up in the console section here. It would say, hey, there's an error and it would stop automatically. What we can see here is everything is working successfully, even though this says this is a development server, that's not relevant to what we're doing. So this is actually a good 
good test, we can now move on to the next step. Now I've already deployed this one, but what we would do is we would deploy this to a live URL. And if you're creating a new one, it would just have the button up here that says deploy. Now I mentioned this in one of my other tutorials about creating the stock price AI agent, which you can watch right here. When you are deploying to a live web server for production, we can scale these down quite a bit because we don't need to have this much power for these types of custom functions, especially if we're testing. Now, if you have a large amount of clients or a, lot of, a large amount of users that are gonna be hitting this bot at the same time, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a little bit more action here to be able to cover any spikes of usage at any time. But for most of us, we can push these down to the bare minimums and then click approve and configure build settings. Once you've clicked this, it's gonna take a few minutes, probably like three to five minutes to deploy it. But once it is deployed, you're going to get a URL. And this is the important URL that we are now going to use in our testing step on Recbin. So if we copy this link address, we can see that we have an example here with the URL. And if I paste this in, you can see it's the same exact URL. We just need to append the URL with the function that we want to point to. And so for this test, we're going to be testing the get product availability function. And we know that this URL is correct because if we go into the function here and we go down to the bottom where we're looking for where it's returning that data, we can see the slash get product availability. That's going to be the spe very specific URL that we need to put in to ensure that this test actually works. And so this now becomes the entire URL and vice versa. If we scroll down to the get order tracking status, we can see that this one is slightly different. So if we were to test this one, we can see that this is the full URL for the get order tracking status custom function. So they're very similar because they're in the same code, they are each returning different types of data, which ensures that everything is working correctly as intended. For example, if we were to test product availability for a certain product, like example, AI dragon shirt, and we click send, we can see that it comes up with the current data of however much inventory it has in inside Shopify. And if we go over to order tracking status, we can see the same thing. If we pass in and test email, it's going to return where that order is and the information that can be used inside of the answer inside the AI agent. Recbin is a really important step because it ensures that the code is actually working correctly before you add any other information into the AI agent, which includes the prompt and the parameters that need to be formatted in a correct way in order to ensure that everything is working properly with both of these functions. So now that we've tested both of the functions, we can go into Stammer AI and we can create a new agent. Once we've added any information that we'd like into the knowledge base, like scraping the website in order to know everything about about the brand, we can go into the labs tab, which is how we create and manage our custom functions. Now the base system prompt here for this specific example is going to be quite simple and redacted from a lot of other information that might be typically added like conversation examples or how the bot should answer and act in certain scenarios. But again, for this tutorial, it's going to be extremely simple where it says if the user is interested in tracking their order, you will ask the user for their email address and then run the function get order tracking. And we can see that that you and we can see that that name get order tracking matches the alias up here with the value of the URL that we were just testing in Recbin. And similarly, it says in the prompt, if the user is interested in product availability or inventory, you will ask the user for a product name and then call the function get avail. And that's the same thing. Get avail has the associated URL and function. And if we click edit function and go into any of these custom functions, we can see that the URL is the exact same as what we were testing inside Recbin. The alias is going to be the name that is referenced inside the AI prompt. The description is just something for yourself to know what this is actually doing. And then the parameters is something that we can also copy and paste in from the Notion template. But it's also something that you can ask ChatGPT itself to create for you based off of the code and based off of the sample parameters that we've added right here to ensure that everything is in the proper format. If something is not in the proper format here, you might get the response that says, hey, our team has been notified that there's an error, blah, 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 but it's actually just an issue with the formatting of parameters. And so once you ensure that everything here is correctly added, then everything in the code should work 
perfectly fine and be able to give correct responses when prompted. And so now what's really cool is now that these custom functions are created and added, this AI agent could be embedded on the website or it could be installed on any of the native integrations or it could be installed using the custom white label API. There's a lot of different ways that this AI agent could be placed to interact with different users and customers based off of what they want to do. It could also be extremely useful for the internal team to be able to find tracking and order information extremely quickly without having to go and search for a bunch of different things. And of course, this is all wrapped within the entire white label AI SaaS model. So you can change the entire platform to match your branding and then sell these Shopify custom AI agents to pretty much any Shopify store. And so if we were to go in and let's just go and test it again real quick, we can see uh, the Delve trucker hat has 9,999 stocks. So let's, let's see how much it start a new one. So let's ask for uh, inventory. Let's go Delve hat. And there we go, 9,999 9, units. So this is how you create a custom Shopify AI agent that is connected to live data within a Shopify store using a custom Shopify app that has access to certain API permissions, code that is being run and deployed via Replit, and then the AI agent and user chat interface that is being created, deployed, and everything is consolidated within Stammer AI to be able to be packaged and sold directly to any of these e-commerce businesses. So for this one, don't forget all of the information and links and everything that you can copy and paste for this tutorial is gonna be linked down below. So don't forget that. And I'll be making a ton more tutorials like this. So if you have any ideas of other custom functions that you'd like me to create, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys next one. Thanks.